Hi guys, uh, Gareth here from Chrome Our Builder Products along with Richard, our head trainer. Um, we're here today at JTD's in Huddersfield on this glorious Friday at their trade event. Um, we're demonstrating our new Flexiglass 2022 product and we're also incorporating our lead axe range uh, with the new Instead of Lead. Richard's going to be performing some demo demonstrations on it, so sit back and relax and enjoy the videos. Okay, so basically what we've got is the Flexiglass 2022. Um, this is a fiberglass, but it's new on the market. It's a multi-surface overlay. So with fiberglass, you can only go on to not just new boards, but only new OSB boards. It does one thing and one thing only. So with this system, it's a multi-surface overlay. So this will go over existing um, fiberglass, felt, GRP, ash felt, but you can also still do a new roof with it as well. All right, so it does everything fiberglass will do and so so much more. All right, so what I'll do is talk through the whole system. I'll apply it for you. I'll show you on top of felt, um, going over old roofs. Uh, any questions you've got, I'll answer them with you. So uh, the whole system, basically we're over here. Okay, so we've got um, your primer, okay, you've got your resin, and you've got your matting, and then we got the catalyst. All right, I'll talk you through all of them. So with a regular fiberglass, you get a clear resin, coloured top coat. This system, um, it's one resin, it's coloured, and that'll get you through all the stages of your resin, matting resin, and then you use the same one as your top coat on there as well. Um, primer goes down first, which is what is going to make this go off and, um, sorry, make everything bond to it. Um, the catalyst then goes into the primer and to the resin, and that's what will make that go off. The matting on this one is a, a 225 gram matting, so regular fiberglass will get a 450 gram matting. Um, this gets a 225. So with this resin, it's designed to be a lot more flexible, which I'll show you here. So there's a piece we've already done. Um, so even though it's rock solid, right, it does have a lot of flex in there. Okay, so but it still needs a reinforcement in there to make sure that that doesn't crack and split. So that's why we've got the 225 gram matting, and that allows for whatever substrate you're going over, that will allow for the expansion, contraction, movement in there. Um, but you still get a rock solid acrylic surface on there. All right, so that's what that is. Um, quantity wise, okay, you're going to get about 15 square meters out of a tin of primer. Um, with the resin from start to finish, you're going to get around 10 to 12 square meters depending on what substrate you're going over. All right, so obviously a felt is going to take up a little bit more resin than if you're going over a nice smooth ash felt or concrete on there. Um, I'll talk you through the mixing guide as, I, as I'm doing it, um, but that's your full system. So you've got your matting, your primer, your resin and your catalyst. Right. Right, so we're going to start off first with a primer. Okay? Everything with this system has to have a primer except for GRP. All right, so no matter what system you're going over, whether it be a new roof or an old roof, it all has to have the primer first in order for this to adhere to it. With a, fib with a pre existing fiberglass roof, because it's already a resin, the resin will bond to it, but the primer won't. So it's very important people do not use a primer on the GRP roof. All right, so I've already put some in there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is the camera, add, add the, add the ca catalyst in there. The catalyst comes in three different sizes. Right, it's already pre-measured out for you, and it comes in 50 mil, 100 mil, and 200 mil. Right, depending on the weather te temperatures, is how much you're going to add into it. So we've got this chart, okay, which is really simplified for you. So we've got the primer on there. Right, it's marked temperature-wise: five to nine, ten to seventeen, eighteen to thirty. How much you've got in liters, and then we've got to guide them to show how much goes in. Per, per litre when you're mixing that up. All right, so for instance, I got a litre in the bucket today. We're about 10 to 17 degrees, so I come onto the chart, look at 10 to 17 degrees, one litre, I need 50, 50 grams in there. So I'm just going to take a 50 gram tube and add that in. All right. Okay. Let's put that to one side. These come basically with a nozzle on there, you can squeeze those in. Okay, if you're not going to use it all, it does take a little bit of time on there. Um, if you are going to be mixing up big quantities, nice and simple, okay, 
snip the end of that off. I'm just going to empty that into there. So it's pre-measured for me. I know exactly how much hardener is going in per what I've measured out to go on to painting. But it's important then, so you can see it's a thick paste, okay, but it does dissolve easy. It does need a good mix. If you just kind of give that a quick stir uh, and then apply that, obviously you're going to have lumps in there. It's not, not going to go on properly. So it's important to give this a good mix. Um, bigger amounts that you're doing on a roof, I put a paddle on the end of a drill and mix that up. Okay, so we're going to give that a mix, make sure it's all dissolved in there. All surfaces you're going to go on have to be clean and dry. If it's, if it's an existing roof, if it's a felt roof, which I'm going to put, um, put the product on today, has to be clean and dry. Right? If you can pressure wash, pressure wash. Um, take care of any bubbles, blisters, loose laps. The system's only going to be as good as whatever substrate you're going over. If you're going to paint over a roof that's been there 15, 20 years, haven't cleaned it, haven't done the prep, this, is not, this isn't going to last. So, a lot of prep on there. Alright, so that's all mixed up. Right. If mixed correctly, no matter what the weather temperatures, you're always going to get around probably 15 to 20 minutes of working time. That'd be more than enough time for you to, between the two of you, to coat a, a standard roof of 25 square meters. Right. And that is a simple then. Nice even coat. You need anywhere between 200 to 500 grams per square meter, depending on what surface you're going over. Okay, uh, but you basically need to get a nice even layer. Make sure everything is coated. No dry spots on there. Okay, so making sure the whole area is covered, nice even coat, quick and easy, and then you leave that go off. Right, at that stage then you get done, start getting prepped, ready for your next stage to get all your matting and your resin on. Right. Right, so 15-20 minutes, okay, it's going to go off, it's nice and dry, and that's ready then for your next stage. Right, so now we... Our next stage on this now is going to be our matting, matting and resin. This is what's going to waterproof the roof and put the, the reinforcement in there. Right, so make, making sure that's dry. Right, we're going to go back to our chart and look at the weather temperatures. Now what we've done on this, um, to simplify it for everyone, is everything is sold in kilos, but when you're up on a roof, everything is measured out in litres. So all your buckets are in litres. So we've really simplified this for everyone and made it so we've converted kilos into litres for you. So we've got our mixing buckets, marks 1 to 10. So again, now we're going to look at the weather temperature and see what we're going to put in. This goes down at a kilo per square metre. Right? So our matting is a metre wide, so however long that run is, is obviously how many square metres you've got. So for instance, if I've got a 7 metre run, I need 7 kilos. Right? So I'm just going to come to the chart, I'm going to come down to 7 kilos, so 7.3 kilos is 5 litres in a mixing bucket. So I'm going to decant 5 litres into the bucket, look at the weather temperatures, again today is 10 to 17, and I'd need 250 grams. Add that in, mix it up, it's always wet on wet, so you apply resin onto the, on top of the primed area, then you roll your matting out into it, and then the other half would go on the top. Right? So, for instance today, um, I've got less in this, so I've got two, two litres in the bucket, I'm going to come across 10 to 17 degrees, I need 100 grams in there. So again, I'm going to come back to my catalysts, I'm going to take a 100 gram tube, slip the end off, squeeze all of that in. Again then, these would be bigger mixes, paddle on a drill, and you need to mix that up to make sure it's all dissolved in there well. It is really important that 
it'll go with the chart and make sure that you are measuring out the right amount of resin to go with the right amount of ca catalyst. If you just try and guess it, um, you're going to put too much and it's going to go off too fast for you. Uh, you're not going to get the working time with it. Uh, worse and even worse than that, if you don't put enough, it's going to take a, a hell of a lot longer to go off. Um, and sometimes if it sits overnight, it's going to draw moisture and it can cause problems. So as long as everyone sticks to the guide of, of, and actually knows how much they mix into the quantity of catalyst and does it correctly, you're always going to get anywhere between 15 minutes and 30 minutes tops if there's a bit of moisture in the air, it'll be pure. So, okay, I'm giving that a good mix up. Right, so as I said, it's always wet on wet. So you go to the area where you're ready to start, apply it, apply the resin to the deck, and the matting goes into it. So right, nice even coat. By putting the wet on wet, you guarantee that you've covered the whole area, and you know that that matting is going to bond to it. Right, so I've rolled up the deck, then you roll your matting out. Right, it's there. Now with this system, with a regular fiberglass, you need the metal roller, which is a consolidator, most of us call it a bubble buster, and that will push the air out of the system and break break the, the matting down. This is a thinner matting. You don't need if they want to use a ball buster they can, but you don't necessarily need to. Your roller will do that for you. Okay, so you use your roller to bed that down and it will bring the resin through. That way you end up with no bubbles and blisters in there. So good good bit of pressure. Okay, bomb that down. Okay, so you go down the whole roof. I'd, I'd be going and put the resin down. Somebody come behind me roll the matting out. Then I go back to where I started. I put the other half of my kilo per square meter over the top. So it's half a kilo per square meter on, onto the deck, matting into it, and then another half kilo on top. When you're applying this on there, you want to make sure that you're not seeing the strands of matting in there and any pinholes. So that's a good way to in indicate that you have put enough resin on there. Okay, if there's pinholes in it, I can draw moisture in. Okay, once that's down, so you come down the whole roof, you would have used everything that's in the bucket. Next run you come to then, you always have to have a clean bucket per mix. It's always in your best interest to use a fresh bucket per one and to put the right amount in it. So if I've, if I've got a seven metre run and there's five of them, I'll take five buckets with me and put the right amount in each bucket. That way I know I put the exact right amount down per square metre and that I've added the, cat, the catalyst in, in, into it and they've all gone down right. right? So what I do then is, is make up my next mix and then it's a minimum of a 75 mil overlap and then you will go ahead and do the next one. Then you make another mix and you keep bringing them in like that. You continue that across the whole roof. If mixed correctly, they should be curing as you come across the roof. So by the time I, I do the first one, second one overlap wet on wet. By the time I get to my third run, the first run should be gone off and so on. As I get to my fourth run, the second one, so it's curing as you're coming across the roof. Okay, so we'll leave that dry and then we'll put the next coat on. Okay. Right, so that's gone off to be to go off. There's one I prepared earlier. Um, so you can see on there, it's all gone off. It's rock solid, so you get that, that hard acrylic top to it. But as I said, it is very fl flexible. Okay, so any movement in the roof, it's not going to split, it's not going to crack. It's very fl flexible, but you are going to get that finish. 
So once that's gone off, any areas that you've got any fibers sticking up, any any um, drips that you made that are sitting high, you can simply just sand those down. Right? So you can just run the sandpaper over it and it will take any, anything off. Uh, it'll give you a nice flush finish then when you're done. If you do sand, you need to use acetone then to clean that dust off before you put the next coat on. So once that's all prep ready to go, it's simply then, so we were a kilo per square meter to start with, half kilo on the deck, matting into it, half kilo on top, let that go off. Then you do 700 grams per square meter on top of that as your top coat. Okay, so it's simply mix it up as we did. All right, so I've, I've already put the cat, cat list into there. And you're just going to simply coat that roof with 700 grams per square meter so it'll give you a nice finish. All right, no pinholes and no sign of any matting showing through. And again, leave that go off. By the time you clean up, pack your van up, everything else has gone off, and then walk the whole area of the roof, double check everything, make sure there's no pinhole in, make sure there's no areas that you need, because if you do, you can just fix it there and then. Right? And, um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is go over an existing failed GRP roof, okay? Unfortunately, there is people out there that don't know what they're doing too well. Um, some people do mess up a roof. Um, unfortunately, they don't go back to it. Uh, so this system will work as a repair system over an existing GRP. So with a regular GRP roof, if it has been done wrong or it's failed, um, you cannot go directly over the top, right? It doesn't bond to it, it'll flake off and it'll fail again. So in order to do that with a regular GRP, you'd have to belt sand all the top coat off the roof, get back down to the resin, clean the whole roof off with acetone, re-resin it and then re-top coat. There's a lot of work involved. Um, most roofers will not want to go and do that. They'd rather replace the roof. This system, because it will bond to existing GRP, okay, you can repair roofs quite easily. You can just use it as a fresh top top coat. Um, if somebody's fixing up the house, painting, um, just wants to make the roof look a bit, a bit better, this can go directly on the top of what's there. Again, it has to be clean and dry. Um, if it is a defective roof, so if, for instance this roof, okay, you can see there's fibres sticking up, there's a lot of pinholing in it, um, you get a lot of roofers that they don't put enough resin down on the roof and that's where a fibreglass roof can fail. You can always tell by seeing the pinholes and all the strands of matting in there. That's going to allow moisture and water in there, okay. So if you do need to put that right, just, you can simply, any defective areas, any fibres that have been left sticking up, you can simply sand these back. Once you've done that, we're going to take the acetone, okay, and this is what will clean the roof. Okay, so we're going to simply okay, so if you are sanding that roof down, it's going to it's going to create dust. So you would just wipe that down and take, take all the dust off it, okay? So because the GRP has already got the matting in there, it's already re reinforced, all right? So if you're going over GRP roof, you can use just the resin on there. We will not put a guarantee on the product if you use it as just a fresh top coat on a roof, you would have to put the full system. But if somebody just wants to repair the roof, make it look better and, and to get rid of all these pinholes and to defective areas you can just use the resin so again I've mixed that up already with the catalyst in there right, and you can just go directly over that fiberglass it's gonna fill all those pinholes and give you a nice finish
Right, this, this is a very quick, easy repair for roofers and to get the roof taken care of without going through all the hassle of either replacing the roof or having to belt sand everything back, re-resin, very costly, very time consuming. So this is just really quick, really easy um, and it will leave the roof looking like a brand new fiberglass roof. And so again, 700 grams per square meter. And you can see the difference in that and what the finish is gonna give you. Right, nice even coat. That's taking care of all those pinholes, taking care of all the, all the matting. And that's it. And then just leave that go off. Yeah, cheers for that, Rich. Thank you very much, mate. Just to let people know as well, it's also compatible with all our GRP trims as well. And um, further information can be found. You can either call Coromar directly, contact your local sales representative, or speak to your local stockist. Um, training courses are available to attain a 20-year guarantee. That will be done through your local stockist as well. Thank you very much for that, Rich. Right, we're going to move on to the Lead Axe range of products now, including the new Instead of Lead. Right, so we're over at the lead axe section now of the uh, demonstration morning. Um, yeah, we already we already have lead axe, which is your Code 5 equivalent lead replacement product, versatile as they come. Um, what we've done is we've incorporated this new one, and this is what Richard's going to be demonstrating this morning, uh, the instead of lead. So as opposed to the Code, the, the code 5 equivalent lead axe, this would be a Code 4 equivalent. Richard's going to show you how malleable it is and all the benefits of being able to use it. Over to you, Rich. Okay. Right, so what we're going to go over now, as you said, is um, the Instead of Lead. So it's new on the market, coming for Code 4. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of things on it, show you how quick and easy it is to work with first. So this is lighter, it's cleaner, all made from recycled products, all be recycled again. Um, as far as lead replacements go, there is a lot on the market. Um, but this is the only one that you can do everything you can do with lead. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, today how, how we weld it, so how quick and easy it is to shape, form, um, wash on corners, the strength and the du durability of it. So uh, I apologise for the noise because I've got the gun heating up there. So um, just show you first. So I'm going to go over shape of it. Okay. So any other lead, obviously it's heavy. So you're going to get up on the roof, get into tiles, you've got, to, you've got to bash it and boss it and, and end up crack tiles. It takes a long time to try and get it all shaped in nice, it's, it, it, do, it does take a lot of time and effort. Right? See how quick and easy this is, you just run your roll out. Um, the, the beauty with this product as well, the lead has to go down in a 1.2 to 1.5 break for expansion and contraction. This will go down in a full 6 metre length, all right? so again very, very quick and easy. So you put your lead into place, you can literally, to start with, press that in, okay, then you take your penny roller and you'll see how quick and easy, you shake that in, it gives that nice sharp finish. No matter how long you go with this, with a lead dresser, you'll never get a, a, a shake as good as that in there. Even into the grooves of those tiles, see how quick and easy that shapes in. Okay, so literally seconds to do what would take you a long time and to not even get that same finish. Right. That will, okay, so next I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is and how malleable it is um, to get around corners, shaping it. So with the regular lead, getting around a 90 degree angle, most roofers are going to cut the lead bend it and then you have a, a, a your, your lead welding kit uh, again very skilled job um, takes a bit of time cost of money okay so even with our instead of lead equivalent to a code five uh, sorry code four um, you would not get a cut code four around around the corner with this it's either going to bubble up um, and split uh, but with this one to show you how quick and easy it is okay so you're going to use just your traditional lead tools all the same lead dressers shape the size is it's exactly the same. Everything you can do with lead, you can do with this product. So it's the only one on the market you can weld. It's, um, it's the only one that will come on the corners the way we do. Alright, so just to give you an idea, 
Okay, I'm going to start shaping this round. that round slowly and it will stretch in there. that's gone completely around the corner no splits in it okay, it's nice and strong saves having to cut it weld it and that's about with that right, you can do ev everything in sit sit you nice and quick nice and easy anyone can can do that so you can do your front aprons back aprons any 90 degree angles just take it completely, completely around there. Uh, so next thing I'm going to do, show you how to heat weld it. As I said, this is the only lead replacement on the market that you can heat, heat weld, right? which makes it, which puts it in a different cat category to all the other lead replacements out there. Right? Very simple to do. You're going to do it um, with a, a Leicester gun or any standard heat, heat gun. It's got to be four, 400 degrees. Right? And these are the same guns that we use for uh, rubber roofing. Um, Show you now, that's quick and easy. So, any overlaps need to be a minimum of 60 mil. All right, so we're going to lap that over. Simply then, once the gun's hot enough, get it hot. You're going to put that into that join and just get a tack weld on it to start with. Very good. Tack at the top, tack at the bottom, down in the middle. Okay, and what that will do then is hold it into place and that doesn't ever move while you're welding. And to make sure that when you're doing your lap that it's not bent over and trying to heat the back of it and stick it, you need to get the heat between the two layers. All right, so again, you're going to take your heavy roller, put the gun in to where you tacked it, turn to a 90 degree angle, sorry, a 45 degree angle, okay, and you're going to start working that, following the end of that tip with your roller. Okay, you can see how that's working. Follow along. And what that's doing is it's heating up the two layers and they're bonding together. So when it cools down, you have a complete watertight solid seal. I'm going to come down with the first one just to show you what's we've got going on. Okay, you can see where that's melting. Okay, so I've made one pass on there. And let it just go again. Put it into really heated and start bringing that round and coming round. You have to make sure that the, the the heat gun is about 10 mil on the outside of that to make sure you're getting heat on that joint. Okay, so quick and easy, nice and clean. Okay, cleaning that out and sealing that there. Okay, and what we got there is a complete watertight seal going on there. Um, just give you an idea, after I've done the heat weld on there to give you the strength of it, I'm just going to have a quick tack weld there, left a bit sticking out. Okay, I'm going to pull on that. Okay. Okay, so it's a solid, uh, you're going you're gonna to rip the material off before you'll actually break, break the seal on it. That's a very strong seal on there. Alright, so you've seen how quick and easy it is, how clean it is. How strong it is um, just to show you the three different products we've got so we've got our LEDX original so as I said this is equivalent up to a code 5 lead okay it will do absolutely everything lead will do 
This is for any areas such as um, chimney trays, valleys, your bigger jobs that you need you need that more strength in there. Okay? So again, you can heat weld it, do everything lead will do, so that's for your bigger jobs. So we then got our instead of lead, right? So our instead of lead is what we've just been using today. That's equivalent to a code four lead. Okay? And obviously you can go in anywhere where building control asks for um, a code four lead, such as your your, your flashings, round windows, on tiles, stuff like that. Alright, so um, and then we've got our, our lead axe self adhesive. Okay, this is basically the same as this product, but it's got a self adhesive back on it. Great for things like if you're working on con conservatories, um, you can put it in as a flashing. Um, anywhere where you want, you can just peel the back off this, bond it, shape it in, um, and it's got a self, a self adhesive back on it. Right? Um, as you saw today, I've just been doing a, a heat weld on this. Um, for those people who don't have a heat gun or they're just a one-off job and don't want to buy one, uh, they're doing a DIY job, we do have um, the lead axe sealant and adhesive. Okay, so this acts as two things. It will put a seal on, so you can use this instead of the, the, the heat weld that I did. So again, you'd have your 60 mil overlap. You'll put two beads down next to each other as a water stop, press it down, it will bleed up slightly, smooth that off, and then you've got your watertight seal with it. Okay, it'll also work as an adhesive. So obviously this is lighter than lead. So for instance, things like what I've done here on the tiles, okay, that you, it hasn't got the weight of lead. So you'll need to put a bead of this down on top of the tiles, shape it down, and you'll get a solid fix to those tiles. So that would be instead of instead of your weld, and um, uh, and it also works as a decent. So anywhere we need to lay sheets in, if you do box gutters, anywhere like that, you can bond it down with with that. So, um, but that's that's the three products. Um, Lex Original Code Five. We got the uh, instead of lead Code Four, and then we got the self adhesive, which is equivalent to this, but with a self adhesive back. Um, just bond it to whatever you want as it is. That rich. So, guys, that's an introduction into the new Flexi Glass 2022 and the Lead Axe Easy, as well as all the other Lead Axe range. Again, like I said before. All information is available either via Chroma directly through your local sales representative or your local stockist. Thanks for watching.